everyone, welcome back to My Colourful Country Life. What better way to kickstart 2021 than with a brand new Kirby book? So this is the much anticipated Fragile World Colour Nature's Wonders. It is currently available to purchase from the UK and will be available for purchase from the US in March. If you are in the US and you can't wait, you can order the book from Book Depository and receive the UK edition, which is currently available for approximately 23 Australian dollars. For my fellow Aussies out there, I do believe some big W's have it in stock and I think QBD might also be stocking it. Um, so maybe give your local store a call to double check. Now the main difference between the UK and US editions in my opinion is the binding and I much prefer the binding in the UK editions. I've previously purchased the US edition of some of Kirby's books and I find the, bin the binding tends to fall apart quite quickly. Um, I'll put purchase links down below. Now I need to tell you that Kirby is donating a portion of the sales to the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation. They're a UK based registered charity who fund wildlife conservation projects across mainly Africa and Asia. So I'll put a link to the charity down below so you can see where the donations will be going. What a beautiful cause and how very gracious of Kirby. I really do appreciate his compassion towards conservation of our planet. So the book is exactly the same size and shape as Kirby's previous books and is 96 pages long. The cover is the usual matte black finish with a raised glossy coloured illustration, both on the front and on the back, both of which you will find inside the book to colour. Now, this book is different to most of Kirby's previous books. It is much more realistic rather than the usual doodles from his Morphia series and the fantasy type of pictures we're used to from Kirby. However, there still is an element of a world within worlds, which you'll see as we look at the pages. And we also don't see Kirby's usual hide and seek element, which I am so very happy about. This is the first book without that as a feature. So each picture features endangered and vulnerable creatures from around the world in their natural habitats. They is a section in the back of facts and information explaining the inspiration behind each illustration and to provide education on the different fragile ecosystems illustrated in the book. So not just a fun coloring book but also a great learning tool. Now I won't read out to you the information in the back but I will tell you what animals are in each page as we go through. So after all that rambling let's dive in and have a good look. Now let me just make sure that I have you all in frame so we can see the full picture okay so the title page is cute it's a little turtle hatching from an egg now this page is not included further in the book but it is clearly colorable still and i love that every page in kirby's books are colorable no page is wasted this is our book belongs to and nameplate page lots of beautiful plants not sure if these are all from endangered habitats as it doesn't say anywhere in the book but I'm sure some clever person out there will be able to fill us all in on the type of plants in this pic. I think I can see a Venus flytrap, but that's the only one I recognise. We have a really cool underwater scene here on the info pages. Um, I'm getting a whirlpool of vibes here from the fish swimming around in circles. Um, I can already envision this coloured. Um, we also have more info on the charity here that I mentioned before. So our first double spread for the book is this majestic looking snow leopard. Check out the expression on his face. He looks pretty fierce. I love how it kind of molds into the mountains in the background. And when you look closely, you can see on his back, um, these little mountain goats and there's some down the bottom here and some rabbits and stuff as well. This one is awesome. I can't wait to color him. Next, we have the New Zealand lesser short tailed bat. Look at that face. It kind of looks like a little pig on his face. This is the mountain gorilla, giving off huge King Kong vibes here. He also has a mountain habitat of sorts growing off his back. A little bit of worlds within worlds creeping here into this pic. You can see again another mountain goat. We have a waterfall. Here, um, these are the southern rock hopper penguins. Fun fact, penguins are one of my most favourite animals in the entire world, specifically fairy penguins. They're just so cute, but also their parenting skills, their quest for a soulmate. They're just gorgeous little creatures. I just love them. 
These are the Lima Leaf Frogs and they look so cute. I can already see this page colored with a tropical palette um, and the penguins colored in an opposite cool tone. So nice and bright and nice and cool colors side by side. Here we have some ring-tailed lemurs. I love the detailing in this page. I think we'll be coloring this one in some autumn tones. I can see it already with a beautiful sunset background. This one here is a Sega antelope and on his back are other little Sega antelopes with their own little habitat here growing out of his fur. Again, this is reminiscent of Worlds Within Worlds. On this page, we have polar bears. Now, the more I stare at this page, the more details I see. We have the large curled up polar bear who was actually creating the iceberg that the other polar bears are perched on. And then we have the sea lions swimming around him. Uh, we have a bunch of chimpanzees here just hanging around. Now, the illustration is um, right in the center here. It's right into the crease of the book. That's going to be a real pain in the butt to try and color, unfortunately. Here we have two American bison facing off. I can see these colored as opposites with the foliage growing out of the top of the heads, perhaps colored differently. For example, perhaps a masculine feminine duo or a cool tone, warm tone, even a night day combo. And again, very worlds within worlds with the foliage growing out the top of their fur. So these are the Queen Alexandra's Birdwing Butterflies and on this page we have the Rusty Patch Bumblebees. What a cool name. Again, we have the plants growing out at the back of the larger bee. Next we have Great White Sharks. This one could be coloured all monotone in blues and greys or perhaps with the sharks monotone and then beautifully coloured tropical fish. We do have a sea lion here about to get eaten. Oh, the mandrill. I love this page. This is possibly my most favorite page in the book and I'm really dying to color this one. I have a clear picture in my head of what color palette I want to use to create this page. On the opposite page, we have the Philippine eagle. He has a little mountain scene coming off his back. These big beauties are humphead wrasses. This picture is bringing back memories of snorkeling around the Great Barrier Reef. I can't wait to see everyone's colorful adaptations of this one. They're gonna be so pretty. These cute and cuddly looking creatures are black footed ferrets. Here we have a couple of giant pandas feasting on some bamboo. Um, this poor panda over here looks like he's got some bamboo coming straight out of his head. That looks really painful. The hippo, this one is going to be another great page to colour. I can't wait to see that one done. Um, there's a few different ways you could colour that one. You can make it quite pretty or you could also make it a bit um, gruesome for a Halloween page with um, a blood dripping down his mouth. Um, on this side, we have the Philippine Naked Backed Fruit Bat. That's really hard to get your mouth around. Now, this little guy is hanging around in a wild cherry tree. So I think the proper name for the tree or the fruit is called Bunye. They're color-wise when ripe, they're sort of dark red, almost black color, and a greenish color when unripe. So they're similar to grape colors. Here we have a jaguar wading through the water and a little frog on the lily pads. Dragonfly there. Another double spread, we've got some hooping cranes running through a pond full of reeds. Again, that spine is cutting right into the main element of this picture. We have an Asian elephant. This picture is another one of my favorites in this book. And some forest owlets. Now this page is awesome. This is a gharial, which is a type of crocodile, but look at all the little elements that make up this page. We've got the little eels, um, a whole different habitat here off his back. 
um, a crane, I think that is, hiding in the foliage there, frogs, lizards. We have a bunch of Galapagos sea lions sunbaking on the beach. Now this is the image on the back of the book. This is the Sumatran tiger. I love the fierce look in his face mixed with the gentleness of the butterflies. I'm pretty excited to see what people do with this page. Um, now this is the black rhinoceros with trees growing out from his skin and also from his horns. And he's got some, I'm not sure what these are, maybe leopards? Are they cheetah? We've got a giraffe down here. So he's obviously ginormous because the giraffe is tiny next to him. You can actually make him into um, a tree as well. Part of the tree. Okay, now this is thick, thick billed parrots. <laughs> now these are normally green in colour with sort of reddish feathers just above their beak and on the top of their wings this is the hawkesbury turtle from the front cover another one of my favorites i feel like i'm saying that about every page now um yeah so this is a page from the cover and he's got this beautiful coral reef attached to his back that's going to look really pretty actually it's going to remind me of the double page in worlds within worlds with the um underwater scene that's going to take a while <laughs> Um, and on the other side, we have a whale shark. Now, these are the Ethiopian wolves. This picture is really cool. The mountains sort of appear to be off in the distance, but also seem to be part of the large wolf. And the little wolves seem to merge into the fur on his back here. So you could colour this as if his fur ends here, or as if his fur is merging into the mountains. Now this is a really cool underwater scene with axolotls. I love axolotls. I used to have some as pets when I was a kid. This is going to be another great one to colour. And look at his smiley little face over here. Here we have the orangutan. I'm starting to feel like a David Attenborough right now. I love how he is looking down and sort of cradling the forest, even though it's also sort of growing out of his arm. So some cuddly koalas. We lost so many of these beauties in the bushfire last year. couple of blue whales there is a lot of blank space in this picture a lot of water get your blue prismas ready guys <laughs> okay this is the emur leopard which is actually the rarest cat on earth this one is going to look striking against the snowy background um, and the red pandas too i think you could almost match these two pages and make them into a double spread Adaxes. This is a type of antelope. You can see the body seems to merge and become the mountain. It could also look like a giant antelope emerging from a cave. Um, and of course, there are smaller adaxes on his back and on his head. Okay, so here we have some dugongs, the ocean's vacuum cleaners. Fun fact, the dugong is supposed to have inspired the mermaid myth. So if you want to colour this a little differently, you could colour the dugongs with mermaid colours. These two strutting their stuff are the greater sage grouse. On this page, we have American burying beetles. Now, these guys tend to eat decomposing vegetation and animals. The beetles have orange markings, so I perhaps colour them quite bright and then a lot of browns um, and autumn colours for the foliage. The sea otter, he is looking pretty chill, except for the fact that he has a crab on his head. Uh, 
Um, some African wild dogs running through the field. They kind of look like they are hunting for some dinner. They don't look very friendly. Marine iguanas or baby godzillas. Again, his body is morphing into the habitat for the little iguanas. We've seen something similar to this in one of Kirby's previous books and it's escaping me right now. But it is the turtle with the um, sea scene on his back, the island scene. Is it Mythomorphia? Anamorphia? I can't remember. Kangaroo Island Dunnets. So Kangaroo Island is off the coast of South Australia and these little critters tend to eat bugs like ants and spiders and things like that. This cute little guy is a European hamster. He's holding a dandelion and making a wish, I presume. I can see this pick coloured in some really pretty spring colours. Okay, here we have some Chinese pangolins. We have narwhals, the unicorns of the sea. On the left, we have the Polynesian ground doves. On the right, we have European eels. This image here makes me think of those plastic six pack rings they used to hold multiple cans together. You see them in a lot of photographs with them ensnaring wildlife, so, but it could also just be sea foam. This is pretty. These are Cape Rock Jumpers. These are Hector's Dolphins, one of the smallest dolphins in the entire world. These happy little birds over here are Hooded Grebes and we have some Tasmanian Devils. And last but not least, we have a beautiful double page with some more penguins. These are the Galapagos penguins. And finally, we have all the info about all the animals. And still a few little things that you can colour along the bottom of these pages as well. So again, not wasted. All right, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. All links will be down below. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll get other notifications for our colour alongs in this book coming soon. Please also comment down below which page you hope will be our first colour along. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.